The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Welcome to another episode of Gate City Chronicles. I'm Kevin Avard, your host. And today we have a special guest from you, for you uh, from Florida, uh, Miss Southeast uh, America. America, America uh, Miss Dreamy Patel. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kevin. It's an honor to be here and, um, you know, an honor to be discussing my background yes. and my platform with you. So uh, just part of your background, uh, you know, we've had uh, some Miss Goffs towns and uh, some, some folks uh, that, you know, in beauty passage, but you were Miss Southeast America. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and uh, one of the runner ups for, for Miss America. Is that correct? Yes. Finalist for Miss America, third runner up for Miss America 2017. Now, yes. How did you get involved with the, with the, with the, uh, the pageants? <laughs> So, you know, it's a really interesting background. I mean, people say never close the door to an opportunities. Mm -hmm. And I was an artist and I always was more of a philanthropist. I use my artwork to really sponsor next generation and use it to f raise funding to sponsor, you know, education for students. Mm -hmm. And so I had one of the Miss America finalists approach me and she said, look, most of the pageantry is about really giving back to about volunteering to be really about inspiring you know of our country to do better and great things for themselves mm -hmm. and you've already got 70 percent of this great things like going for you donating your artwork to inspire students so why don't you do that and other 30 percent is just you just have to go on stage look confidence be able to speak public speaking and look good you know and sell off yourself <laughs> so, so was it, i'm was like it well I, it must have been fun yes yeah it was the most amazing experience i've had in my life oh. i have to say yes yeah so well, <laughs> I, I would imagine uh so you're not only miss southeast america you also work for in the space industry somehow like lockheed martin or uh, tell us a yes. little bit about that Yes, I've had an opportunity to work with multiple defense contractors like Harris Corporation, you know, sponsor Boeing um, programs as well. And I worked on International Space Station program, and that was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of the people don't realize that the space program has a direct impact on our medical field. Like if you think of MRI, like CAT scan and you know this um, the the uh, therapeutical beds that you go. Most of the research and development was done on NASA. Really, and it was phenomenal supporting those programs and you know being electrical engineering from Penn State and getting an MBA and being front side of the business and working for Harris Corporation to sponsor these great things. And I feel proud, you know, to be working for defense industry like Harris right. and Boeing and all of this you know great teammates that so, comes together so you have a you have an analytical mind but you're an artist that's interesting yeah, I know. You know what? That's that's something I will have. I will have to say my my role model is Oprah Winfrey, okay. and also, um, yeah, my role model is Oprah Winfrey. She says, "Never say no to an opportunity," right. because you know I am a left and a right brain person, and I love to you know be innovative, and I 
you never know where the future leave, leads, right? right? I was an engineer with Penn State. I got my MBA and I was an artist. And then here I am, I'm meeting all these great people who are leaders of the country, um, do, you know, doing Miss America pageants and stuff. And they got me involved with this platform, which was phenomenal to give back to our community. And I was able to use the perfect combination of left and a right brain to inspire America's next generation. That, that, that's really wonderful. And I think that's part of your platform uh, is, is this whole dare to dream. Do I have that correct? Correct. To yes, dare, it is dare to dream. Dare to dream. Yeah. And uh, you're, you're an engineer and uh, that, that's a field wide open for, for, for young ladies to, to, to get involved with and you want to encourage them there. Uh, and yet you, you, you mentioned about education and how that you yes. donated your artwork to uh, Marty County High School in Florida School District. So how mm -hmm. does how does that uh, help out with with children? Is, is does it help with private schooling, uh, public schooling? How uh, how yeah. does that impact the uh, education? You know, I think it's really important for next generation to really figure out what their full potentials are, mm -hmm. you know, you know, what they're best at, like Michael Jordan, you know, or Oprah Winfrey. They're great at TV, pers like Michael, you know, Oprah Winfrey is great at TV personality. Right. And if you ask Oprah Winfrey to, you know, do give her a baseball bat and play a, ba you know, a baseball game, she's going to be different, Right. right? So it's important to figure figure out what you're good at. Plenty and for of strengths. Me, yes, right. exactly. So you know, for me, when I did Dare to Dream platform, it was take your full potentials. You are only you only know what your full potentials are, and you know how far you can take that. And for me, it was an art. And for me, it was really to go and win new businesses for space industries. You mm -hmm. know, leading defense industries, and um, so I pursued that. And I want to pursue. You know, I want to encourage next America's next generation to overcome the fears. You know, for them to be brave rather than fearless you know for them to be brave not perfect because so, nobody's perfect speaking of the bravery you know when yeah. you, you you have a piece of art and mm -hmm. you you look at it and you think oh i really like this but i don't know if anybody else will like it when did you when did you discover that you could actually take your art and put it in front of people and and then be vulnerable and, and let them look at your art and, and, and criticize it or, or like it. I mean, what was your first piece of art that you actually displayed for the public? So it was the first piece of art was Apsara. And uh, being in high school, I was like a nerd. You know, I loved my calculus. I loved my physics and I loved my art classes mm -hmm. and my our teacher was just so inspired by this piece I drew was, was Apsara and it was mainly to like this beautiful woman, you know, I found in um, a, like a magazine and she just had this graceful feature mm -hmm. that I wanted to capture in my artwork and he exhibited it into an art gallery and, you know, superintendent of Marty County exhibited. So, you know, I said to myself, look, you know, it's not about what other things you have to be very, you have to know yourself, your full potentials. And when you know that everybody else around you is going to be inspired. Like when they, you know, focused on that artwork and they, they exhibited into art gallery, everybody was like, wow, that's Dreamy Patel who drew up Sarah. <laughs> you know, I didn't even know people in streets and they were just, they knew me. Right. And it yeah. just was so inspiring to sure. them that any, you know, if she's able to do that, then we have to find our full potentials as well. I was going through some of your artwork and uh, uh, I, I think I was telling you off air that one of the things that, that captured me was, uh, it was one of your, I guess it's one of your first watercolors. And uh, the, oy the oyster bay, and uh, it's just—it's just a picture of a dock <laughs> with with like three or four dinghies, you know, with the uh, tied to the dock. And uh, I just—I I love artwork that has to do has a theme about the ocean and and, and things of that nature. But uh, I, I, and I'm looking at all your other artwork; it, it, it's gorgeous. Uh, but that one, I I really really liked it. What what is the story behind that particular one with the with the dinghies, uh, the little boats? <laughs> It's so simple, right? It's just so simple, right. but yet 
like capturing and i have to say so istra bay there's a whole history behind it of our president the- theodore roosevelt was part of the oyster bay history and i used to go there so i lived in oyster bay for 2 years and i used to spend like every you know evening just kind of like looking at the dock and kind of just calming while i was working you know i used to capture the the beauty of the bay itself and that's that's when i had an opportunity to capture um the oyster bay into water and that was my first watercolor so it was challenging but it was my first watercolor simple, uh, simple but complex but, but complex <laughs> and, and it's a very i i it, i love it and as we're having an interview there's a there's a picture behind you and that has to do with the a, a crossing of a bridge Yes, can you see the whole thing? I can see that. Yes. <laughs> so, Great. tell us a little yeah. bit about that. Yeah, so you know what I I have to say, growing up when you're in high school just like any other kids, we all have our insecurities, right? Mm-hmm. For me, going through calculus and physics and all this other art classes were my strengths but when i was in chemistry that were just something i was improving with so we all have an insecurity so i started with the bridge this painting all it was was the bridge how can i overcome my insecurities challenges and what is the future i have i made a goal for myself i went to visit the entire world and i sat you know specific places like sydney australia cathedral taj mahal and all of this so over this long bridge of obstacles you know there's this beautiful future that like overlays and as you know it it was like more of a positive you know feeling for me right. and it really helped me overcome that and i was able to be an honor student and become a student and you know get into my dream school sure. and um after after this painting i also had captured like great other paintings like taj mahal costa rica yeah you, you, you actually have a picture of- <laughs> of the Taj Mahal. Have you visited the Taj Mahal? Yeah. I have. Yeah. I told my dad, I'm like, you know, we're going to make a promise. I get into Penn State or like one of the good schools and you're going to take me to all these places I'm going to go around the world. Mm-hmm. So he took me to Taj Mahal and you know, I learned a great history behind it. I mean, the, the, the Taj Mahal is a great architecture that was built all the way back in 16 uh, I took a notes for myself sorry <laughs> it was like 1632 yep. yes it was built all the way back into 1632 Uh, 32 and you know there was there was a whole history about Sajanak he had multiple wives back then and he wanted to inspire like you know something that he felt love for and which was Mumtaz so he built a tomb in memory of Mumtaz and it's been preserved for over so many years and yet you just go there and it's so capturing and you just feel that you know when i was there i'm like i have to paint a picture for this right you know it's a beautiful like sunset and it's a reflection of a beautiful sunset on taj mahal there were 20,000 artists who were involved with it for over 30,000 i mean over 30 years and you know 20,000 artists over 30 years and um they they made it into a beautiful architecture so yeah it's a beautiful painting uh is that an oil or is that uh is it's acrylic it's acrylic a, acrylic so one of my other favorite ones that you have uh it has to do with the waterfall and as i look at the picture uh, you, you capture the discoloration of the water just going over the edge a little bit uh it just looks like something out of uh, out of africa or or something uh Yes. I'm not yeah. I'm not sure what the story behind that is but <clears throat> when you're taking a picture of something usually you know if there's a leaf in the way uh you you're focusing mm-hmm. far away and and you capture you know, the leaf gets in the way but you want it there because it gives you uh something to to look at but it's a blur and you kind of do that with your painting or yeah. is is that a painting or is that oil I mean uh, oil is, or is that a watercolor a watercolor it's That's my watercolor. F- second watercolor so the oyster bay as you love it's one of my this is my first and the second one the watercolors are the hardest paintings to make because you know when there's you no want to go into, yeah there's no room for error once you exactly 
<laughs> you got it, you know. And so Victoria Falls, I have not visited that, but it's on my, you know, to-do list. Okay. And uh, Victoria Falls in Africa. And, you know, it's just phenomenal. When I saw the picture, it just it just really captured me and I had to make a painting, of, painting for it. So I'm only inspired to, like, go visit that, you know, sometime in the future. Well, I, I was guessing that that was from Africa, but I, I love watching the Nature Channel, so uh, <laughs> National Geographic or Blue Planet. And speaking of which, you have another picture of, of some dolphins and a lot of sea creatures. You, you seem to have a, a love for the ocean. Yeah, I just, I mean, living in Florida, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, you get to see the dolphins. Like my parents have a beautiful house on the river with the dolphins I get to see. And I love snorkeling and scuba diving. So when I get to really explore the whole undersea, which is in completely different world, it takes me away from engineering sure. and it takes me away from like my, you know, world of work. And it's so relaxing and soothing and I want to capture it into my paintings. So, yes. So how much time do you spend uh, with new creations, with with uh, with paintings and, and, and whatnot? You know, it it depends. Like that, um, the one one you mentioned about the under the sea that took me literally four to five months. I spent two hours every day, and that was in high school. Most of the stuff I send you were in high school. I've also send you some of my recent paintings, like mm -hmm. Colosseum, um, and it just when I start my painting. I get up seven o'clock in the morning and I work through it till like two or three o'clock at night. And I don't realize how the day's like surpassing because right. you're so focused. You know, when you feel passionate about something, sure. you're so focused and you just want to see the entire vision, right? Do you play music and, behind while you're listening or do you, do you listen to anything <laughs> or are you just focused on your painting? I love music. I love music like a relaxing piano music it's great right. you know any any anything anything that relaxes you it's it's a therapeutic yeah. it just takes you away from like are you challenges. finding are you finding any um, impact when when you you know with within the education field are are you finding that kids are actually drawn to some of your paintings mm -hmm. or are, are are you feeling that you've had an impact on on some individuals um, <laughs> To, yes. to come out of their shell, if you will. Yes, you know, that's that's so true. So my my platform is Dare to Dream, mm -hmm. and I want to teach America's next generation to be brave and not perfect. Right. I mean, everybody has a setback. Everybody has a failure. Walt Disney was let go of a job for lacking creation. Mm -hmm. You know, Oprah Winfrey was demoted for not having a TV personality. And um, right. Beyonce... <laughs> Yes, you know, she talks about it. Mm -hmm. And Beyonce, you know, made hundreds of mu music albums before she was able to really reach her peak. And, you know, so is Harry Potter's author. She wrote so many different, you know, books before she was able to really accomplish the full potential. So there's hope and for so all I of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I mean, for me, right, exactly for me too. And it's just never give up. Be persistent, mm -hmm. you know, know your worth, know your full potentials, know you who you are. I mean, you have great background and, you know, you're you're my role model. You're one of my role models. And you have an incredible background, mm -hmm. Kevin. And um, it just, you know, so you know that there's always going to be obstacles and challenges. And for me, I've been fortunate to have amazing parents who are more of a cushion. So anytime I have a setback, I go to my parents. But I I want, you know, next generation of students to know that, look, there's always going to be failures. It's not you. Just surround yourself with people who believe in you because there are plenty of people who will support you. And that's why I started donating my artwork to really sponsor students' education okay. and, you know, um, to really make an impact for themselves. So where do you target your, your, um, your donations? Do you, mm -hmm. do you have a specific, specific school, specific uh, places where you want them to, to, to make an impact? Is there a, a, a particular type of education? Uh, I would, so I'm really uh, for STEM education, STEM. like 
actually I want to say STEAM. So it's science, technology, engineering, mm -hmm. art, and medicine, right? Ah, Because yes. they're all very critical. So there's STEM, which leaves out art, but art is so important to be creative and innovative. Some of our greatest people in history were artists, Leonardo da Vinci, right? I mean, hello, <laughs> right? And he was an engineer, wasn't he? Yes. He was a renaissance yes. man all the way. There you go. So uh, it would be nice to have a few people like that to, uh, you know, just use every part of your gifts that you have and, and offer. Um, where, um, where can people find your artwork? So most of my art, some of my artwork is an art gallery mm -hmm. and some of, of you know, uh, it's a gift to my family. It's just a gift to my family as well as I have it in my house here, but I want to explore on it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like people say um, when people look at me and they look at all those different diverse skill sets, they're like, wow, you're really meant to be an artist and you really need to pursue this. So I am only, you know, growing to be an aspire artist and because that's just where I put my heart and soul into. So do you, do you display some of it on Facebook or? Uh, I do. Okay. I have it on my Facebook and there is dreamyartcreation.com. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have a lot of my artwork on there. And, you know, I just, it's, it's just not an artwork, but it's an inspiration to students that pursue your passion. Like Michael, Michael Jordan, right? If they asked him to be a singer, he would never be successful at it. <laughs> Leave that to me. <laughs> He's what? <laughs> I said, Leave that to me. I'm the singer. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I'm sure you are. I am. So, you know, like, you know, it just, you have to find your niche, what you're good at. Right. And, uh, I agree. you know, for me, it's, it's two things. I want to be an artist and I want to be a business development. I want to capture all this amazing businesses for defense companies like Boeing and Harris and North Grumman and Radeon because... It just defense industries and space goes a long way. Many people don't realize that um, the space research and development is completely associated with cancer and AIDS. Oh, yeah. You know, hmm. yes, like when we sponsor um, additional funding and budgets to research and development for international and space station program, the way um, the zero gravity you know, response to the research and development of human cell is so much more accelerated than here on Earth. Really? That's interesting. Yeah. Mm. Yes. And yeah. now, and now, from what we just understand, uh, China is now on the moon, on the dark side of the moon. So you wonder what all that's about. But uh, I wonder what kind of research they're doing there. Uh, but uh, NASA's been a big part of, of America's uh, growth. Big, big, big part. And uh, it would, yeah. it would, we would love to see it uh, flourish again and as, as it once did before. Um, so how do people get in touch with you? So people get in touch with me through Facebook, through LinkedIn, through my email, through my cell phone. You know, um, I've got a lot of contact information through Gmail. Okay. But my message is really to inspire next generation. And I really want to see a cure for cancer and for AIDS. Yeah. Um, and, you know, people don't think projects like space, International Space Station program is uh, related to medical field, but it really is. We're doing research and development on sp International Space Station program, and it's so much more ahead. We just need more funding. We right. just need to more support more of scientists and, you know, back them up. Do you see that there's a will in, uh, in, in the people in, in, uh, to, for funding? Do you see that... Uh, the, it potential of, of growth uh, with the, I guess it's the federal government that funds NASA, correct? Yes. Uh, yes is, correct. is there a will there for them to uh, increase funding? I really would like to, you know, see a will for it. I mean, we have such a, we've beefed up our defense industry right. and we've got like, one of the leading defense industry and I am one of the most proud to be you know working for multiple defense industries but I think we really need to focus where we're able to resolve and cure cancer and research and new development for mm -hmm. AIDS and many other and for us to do that it really we have to fund our space programs right 
So, yeah. Well, it's been a pleasure talking with you. And, Thank uh, you, Kevin. And I really am honored that you're on the show, and we hope that uh, you can make an impact. And I, I think being a role model is 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 very important. I think there are a lot of people that do struggle with coming out of the box and uh, that, that they create for themselves. They limit themselves because of fear. Yes. And if you can, if you can build that bridge or paint that bridge to cross that bridge and, and, and yes. overcome those fears, there's nothing you can't do, right? No, absolutely not. We've all overcome those fears, but mm -hmm. it's so important to believe in yourself, your mm -hmm. dreams, your capability, you know, um, don't limit yourself into someone else tells you you're not capable of your failure. But, you know, every successful celebrity has, a, you know, um, back uh, overcome those challenges right. and I want to let you know leave a message that always dare to dream and always pursue your ambitious and what your full potentials are and you're gonna do incredible things for the country I agree and thank you very much for coming on the show so if you want to look at uh, Dreamy's uh, artwork check her out on Facebook uh, I know she's on LinkedIn and uh, the other areas and uh, Take her message to heart. You know, if you have a gift, if you have a dream, don't be afraid to express your 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 goals, your your desires, because the only thing that limits you is yourself. And uh, that's one of the great messages I, I think she's bringing forward. But check out her artwork; she's very very talented. And uh, until next week, thanks for watching Gate City Chronicles. Proceeding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.